Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassie and today we're going to be talking about how I designed my dream wardrobe. This is for fall, winter 2021 and 2022. If you're new here, this channel is all about garment making, specifically knitting and sewing and how I am making my own wardrobe one piece at a time. You'll occasionally see some thrifting content in here, but predominantly we're about making our own stuff. Before we get into the video, if you are not yet subscribed, I would love if you follow along on my sewing journey by hitting the subscribe button below. And maybe you want to give this video a thumbs up, or if you want to wait until the end to see if you like it, that's cool too. Now without waiting any further, let us get into the video. So the first thing I did when designing my fall and winter wardrobe was to look in my closet for what I already had. You know, obviously like we have certain pieces that we love and certain things that we don't love as much, but it is important to see how things are working together. If there are any gaps, look at the colors and shapes and all of that in our wardrobes and see what we're reaching for. So what I did was I actually pulled all my favorite garments, all the things that I have for fall or that are transitioning from fall to summer and then and into winter and I decided you know what I wanted to keep what I wanted to donate or sell or consign and started to build my wardrobe plan from there one of the things I was really looking for though was color I tend to know what kind of shapes I like best on me um, high-rise jeans or high-rise pants kind of fitted through the the butt and the waist and the hip and then a little bit looser through the thigh and down through the ankle I tend to gravitate towards knits especially in the winter time but I don't actually often sew with knit fabric so I'm gonna be trying that a little bit more and then I also love knitting sweaters and hats and scarves so I'm gonna be trying to do a little bit more of that to give me the like bulky warmth for the winter and then for the fall i'm noticing that i could definitely use a few more blouses um something de i'm definitely lacking and something i haven't actually sewed all that much i've made a few short sleeve blouses but not really so much um long sleeve blouses or shirts um anything like that and i tend to not like something that's too fussy i love a puffy sleeve but sometimes i find that the sleeves sit a bit funny um, along my shoulder and i just don't really want to think about it i love something that's light like a silk like this um a lightweight cotton um you know something that is going to also transition well that i can wear year round and not just for fall and winter. I don't really like to make things too seasonal except for like, you know, the extreme heat and extreme cold. So that's kind of what I was looking for as well as colors. So, you know, I know that I love like this kind of like bluey gray. I have a lot of uh, these colors in my wardrobe and it's something that I want to continue to do, but I also want to change up the color palette a little bit um, by adding more complementary colors, um, adding a bit of brightness to break up all of the blue and the neutrals. And that's where like the fun will sort of like be injected into the wardrobe. And then I also wanted to think about whether I was going to be buying anything new thrifting them or making it so for example i buy all my shoes i tend to thrift or buy new so that's kind of like you know the shoes are, are over here for bags i will always thrift my bags but i only tend to use like one or two anyways and then the thing that i usually do purchase is those basics or base layers so turtlenecks t-shirts underwear but i do have some knit fabric that i haven't used and i would like to explore a bit more of making those from scratch so i think I'll, i will do that and then for you know coats and bottoms i think it'll be a combination of making my own and then also uh, thrifting good pieces like a nice wool coat or um, a nice pair of denim something like that as i mentioned earlier color is something that i really want to pay attention to this year so Finding a color scheme was important. You don't have to find a color scheme, but you know, I find that if I start to inject a lot of bright colors like pinks or things that don't really complement my wardrobe, I'm actually not gonna reach for them. So while I don't necessarily wanna limit myself to a color palette, I know realistically that having some sort of like palette guidelines is something that's gonna help me with bringing new things into my wardrobe and will also help me in the process of buying fabrics, thrifting fabrics, and just bringing you know, new pieces in as well. So what I did for this was actually really fun. I started to think about, you know, the color palette that I gravitate to. And like I said, it's predominantly blues and grays. So this sort of like 
dusty blue or like a, a midnight blue. Um, something with like a bit of like a greener undertone is like kind of what I, I tend to go for, a bit of a cooler undertone. So when I started to look at my wardrobe and see this color palette coming through, I started to think about what other colors I do have in my wardrobe and other um, complementary colors that or shades that would work well with the blue. Yosemite has always been one of those landscapes that I have seen and felt that you can build a really solid color palette out of, especially with the colors that I was looking for. So I went on to Pinterest, I typed in Yosemite color palette, and I found quite a few like, really beautiful color palettes, but I decided that in the end I wanted to design my own color palette. So I instead found a picture of Yosemite that I wasn't necessarily focusing on the colors so much, like a little bit for sure, but how it made me feel, and it made me feel really calm, and I really liked how all of the colors were working together in the image. Then I took that image, put it into Canva, and I used the function in Canva where you can go to the colors and scroll down, and you'll see that there's a, um, a section there that pulls colors from the photo. So those colors weren't actually colors that I felt really like vibed with what I was looking for, um, but they were close. So I went into each of those colors and just selected a different depth or um, moved the scale just a little bit to kind of find the right colors. So in the end, I ended up having the range that I wanted, but the colors were a little bit different from what the you know Canva color palette had given me. That said, they were all colors still found in the image and it worked really well in the end and I'm really happy with the colors that I came with. Will I stick to this color palette? You know, mostly I think so, but that's not really the point. It's more to see, um, to be more intentional about what I bring in. So I know that I would love to bring in more of that sort of like red orange tone and so um, I can kind of see from like what I have in my wardrobe knowing that those blues are really close to what I have in my wardrobe already that this sort of tone uh, this shade of red will work really well with everything else from here I did the classic Pinterest review as well as my Instagram saves so I wasn't necessarily looking for new things to pin but I was going through my existing pins to see what I had been accumulating and I found that once I actually did take to Pinterest my ideas were already quite formed based off of the pins that I've been collecting for a few months. So, you know, for example, I knew that this sort of like red, like Misha and Puff sweater was what I really envisioned bringing into my wardrobe when I chose that red color to be like a, you know, a shade I wanted to include. And so I put that into a new board that had my color palette and some of the pieces that I think that I wanted to recreate. So for example, the sweater, uh, this is like a classic like Misha and Puff style sweater. I loved the red and I feel like I can find a pattern that I can make this sweater from. So I put that into my new board. Uh, same with, you know, some of the jeans here. Um, it's a combination of texture, so wool, um, or, you know, knits, a combination of shapes, so a bit, you know, boxier and shorter, or um, more structured, like structured pants, for example, and bringing those all together, not as like a final decision, but as a way to sort of begin to make plans and make choices for what the closet and what my wardrobe's gonna look like overall. And one thing that I really noticed from looking at this is that I would really like to build a wardrobe that has a short and like structured boxy uh, wool jacket with like a waistband. I would really like to make a pair of structured sort of sailor pants, a pair of overalls. I would like to make a red sort of like bobble sweater like the Nisha and Puff one that I mentioned. I really want to make a double front jeans, so those like classic Rudy Jude style jeans that have the double knee with the contrast top stitching. And I would really love to bring in a few more blouses as well. I think something in black, maybe with some contrast top stitching and a more like casual one um, that, you know, is a bit more everyday that I can kind of throw on. And so once I had this sort of idea of the things that I wanted to make, when I went into my fabric shopping, I had a way better sense of what I wanted to bring in and what gaps I was filling in colors and shapes and different styles so that when I was choosing my fabric, I wasn't just getting distracted like a magpie and picking all the shiny, beautiful things and all the different colors. I was sticking with you know what I had envisioned would work for me long term, which 
brings me into the fabric shopping portion. Now I tend to do a lot of shopping for fabrics in thrift stores and that can be challenging because you see something really beautiful there and you want to bring it into your closet because it, you know, it feels rare and it, it is, you know, you're not necessarily going to find it again at the thrift store, but I have to really I have to really push against that urge because, you know, it doesn't always like make sense. Like I found this bright red like felt that I loved and there was so much of it and I brought it home and was like, what am I gonna do with all of this? I ended up using it for a toile and that was fine, but I still have so much of it and I'm probably gonna have to like redonate it because it's just too much for my stash. I also love looking on, you know, the different fabric stores. I tend to use Blackbird Fabrics, Riverside Textiles, Simplify Fabrics. Those are the sort of main ones that I use. But with those, you know, they often have sales uh, and when they do have sales, I will, maybe just buy everything or buy a bunch of things that catch my eye but i'm not planning so this time when i went to those websites and i started to pick the fabrics that i wanted i was being really intentional i was thinking about as i mentioned before knits versus wovens maybe bringing in a few more um, knits into my wardrobe and planning a few basic pieces around that. For wovens, I, I really love woven fabrics and kind of can get a bit distracted, so I had to think about, again, the pieces that I wanted to make. I knew I wanted to make overalls, so I looked for a striped, um, hickory striped denim, and I found that. I knew that I wanted to make a pair of structured sailor pants, and so uh, bull denim was really good for that, like a 10 ounce one. I knew that I wanted to bring in something lighter and more flowy for a blouse. I found a few different fabrics for that. And so kind of really making sure that I'm thinking about the projects when I'm buying the fabric. And my Pinterest board was perfect for doing that. The last step that I did was actually something a little bit different for me. I tried to draw out my plans uh, in a sketchbook. So I would not identify as a visual artist when it comes to drawing, painting, or any of that. But I have always loved drawing, and I find that you know drawing garments can be a bit tricky because I can vision it well in my brain, um, but putting it to paper is really quite difficult for me. But I know that that just comes with practice and it's something that I have to do more of. So I wanted to get over this fear of drawing and I decided to buy this really cool sketchbook that I think maybe will interest some of you as well. So the sketchbook that I'm excited to show you, and this is not sponsored, I bought it because I had seen quite a few recommendations for it, is the Gertie's New Fashion Sketchbook. And what it is, is it provides a template of different croquis that you can go in and draw on top of. Now, a croquis is essentially a outline of a figure, usually for garment making. And so you will draw on top of the croquis to um, create the outline or the sketch of the garment that you're thinking of. Now, the croquis that you usually see are traditionally long and, and slim, more model-esque and less sort of everyday bodies that, that you know you see all the time. So there's not a variety of shapes and figures, and so as a result, it you know if you are a sewist and you're drawing a croquis for you know um, a garment that you're envisioning, but you're drawing it on this long, slim figure, it's likely got, not going to look you know close to how it will on you, and may also distort your own view of how the garment should look. Now for this book, the croquis are actually in a variety of different shapes. There are many different sort of um, figures within this book, and I really also love how they are designed. Now in this book, not only are the croquis designed in a variety of different shapes, as I mentioned, but the outlines of the figures are done in a really light gray that when you draw over it is like very, very easy um, to cover. It doesn't like take up the page and you know, it, as a result, you can kind of manipulate the drawing a bit so it doesn't have to be exactly as the croquis is outlined. These are a few examples here and here. They're really quite faint and I really have enjoyed drawing on them as well. So for my drawings, I went into my fabric stash and I started to pick all the fabrics and decide on what I was going to pair these fabrics with. Then I cut these little swatches here, so cute and fun to see them like this, and I drew them in my notebook with uh, the corresponding pattern that I wanted to. Some of these I sort of like 
free-handed um, I didn't really have like a pattern in mind and then some of them I um, went in with like an exact design that I knew I wanted and I'll show you what these results were because I honestly really love how they turned out and it's such a fun visual representation of how I want my wardrobe to look and it also just organizes my projects really neatly so for this first one I went with a cord and a uh, cotton shirting so I bought this cotton shirting from blackbird fabrics and I knew immediately that the pattern I wanted to use was the, the Luovo blouse from building the pattern I have this book and I've actually reviewed it if you want to check out that video I'll list it up above but I loved the detail in the neckline and the cuffs I loved it. it was a bit of a boxier fit you could add pockets so I'm really excited to make that one and I knew immediately once I had bought the and I keep saying immediately because it's true it's like a vision um, I knew that I wanted to pair it with this cord and I loved how the cord and the blue work together with the stripes from the yellow and orange ties really lovely together and for this I think I'm likely going to either do like a button-up mini skirt like a cord button up mini skirt or I'll do like um like a wrap skirt I have one already at home that I love that I might build a pattern off of so I think those two will be really sweet together but I also think they'll pair well with some of the other uh, choices that I have in this book for the next one I wanted to include a pattern that I was already working on it's the Claude sweater from uh, I believe Joanna knits but I'll link her below and I started already knitting a few of the panels this is the I believe this is going to be the bag of the sweater and I did it in this like really lovely squishy mohair and merino wool from Knitting for Olive. You can see like this is going to be the uh, bottom hem there and I'm just overall like I love knitting sweaters and the feeling of like completing a sweater is really really satisfying. So I wanted to include that in my sort of catalog of patterns so again to keep it all consistent for the denim I have the straight leg Dawn jean and this is actually going to be a hopefully very wearable toile uh, so if you're not certain what a toile is it's essentially like a mock-up and you can make it as detailed or as basic as possible so it could be like just you know to get the fit or it could be you know wearable so that you do all of the details like top stitching and all of that so I'm using my thrifted denim because I got it for like three dollars three meters from the thrift store it was such a steal such a really nice quality black denim and so hopefully this helps me get like the ideal fit for my dawn jean and also will help me to build one of the other uh, garments i'm going to show you later on one of the items that i am the most excited about is the jenny overall which is a pattern that i've made before i've shown it on this channel quite a few times but these overalls are my favorite and for the newest variation of this pattern i'm going to do it in this railroad stripe that i am really really excited about i really love the selvage on the railroad stripe here so i want to try to find a way to use it but, but i'm not quite sure how yet i'm thinking that it might be incorporated into um, the bib detail maybe around like the bib pocket i think that would be really fun so i haven't decided yet but it's just so pretty um, i really really love the selvage on this denim it's really special paired with the jenny overalls i have i've written here the lova top but i don't think it's going to be this top but i know that i want a black button-up shirt with an exaggerated collar and then i know that i want to do a contrast like top stitching on the collar so I've seen uh, this Ghani shirt that I think is so cool and like I really love the big 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 collar um, with the top white top stitching I think it adds this like really lovely contrast between masculine and feminine within the blouse so I initially was going to do this blouse with a bit of a, a like a viscose like a tensile viscose but I don't think that that is going to be the right choice instead I think I'm going to get like a, a thicker cotton or like a cotton shirting and that will be better I think something with a bit more structure for the blouse will work really well but that one is a bit more up in the air in terms of like a plan um, I think some of the other pieces I have on here are a bit more concrete and then beside this drawing I have a red uh, pom-pom sweater or bobble sweater popcorn sweater whatever you want to call it inspired by Misha and Puff which I mentioned earlier and this is in a red wool which I have purchased I believe I just need to get the I bought the mohair I just need to buy the merino because I love that sort of like halo glow that uh, merino and mohair pair together that you can see it with uh, this wool actually that has like a really like nice like kind of halo around it so I'm going to be knitting that sweater I haven't found a pattern for it yet but I think there are quite a few online that I can use or I can either just use the uh, 
the stitch for like the popcorn stitch and pair it with an existing sweater pattern that I already have. Paired here with the sweater, I have the Persephone pant that will be in a 10 ounce bull denim. But the more that I think about it, I think I will likely do the Dawn jean, but in the wide leg view. They are, you know, a similar enough pattern that I don't need to go buy like a whole other pattern to do it. So that's likely what will end up happening. I have the bull denim coming from Blackbird Fabrics, and so I think that's kind of where that will go. And then for my last drawing, I have here a wool jacket. I am really, really excited about this wool jacket. I love the combination of the green and the blue. It sort of works exactly with the color palette that I had mentioned. And this was actually, I think, the wool that kind of sparked this idea for the color palette in the first place. And so it will be a cropped, like, short jacket with a waistband, like maybe similar to the Ilford, but I think a bit more, um, yeah, definitely cropped and definitely with like a bottom waistband I think will be really really cute and I would love to like knit like a little green hat to go with it and then lastly the two pieces that I've probably been dreaming up the most are the Rudy Jude jean and the Baba sweater so obviously I'm not going to copy it the baba sweater exactly i don't even have the pattern for it so i couldn't but i'm going to find a equivalent pattern i have a few in mind um, i'm thinking maybe like the pan cardigan uh, from uh, sari knits i believe i have to double check her um, her handle but likely yeah the pan cardigan or one from ozetta the seasons cardigan looks uh, kind of similar so something like that in a like neutral sort of like tan uh, beige wool I think will be really pretty and then the uh, Rudy Jude jean which will be like a Japanese indigo denim with the double front and top stitch uh, contrast top stitch this is like the piece that I've been thinking about since I like, started to sew was I really wanted to make this pair of jeans I almost bought them once but it just really didn't fit within my budget and I also wanted the challenge of trying to you know make something inspired by it so it's something I'm really looking forward to doing I haven't bought the denim yet because I want to try you know my Twall uh, Dawn jeans in that black denim and then also do like the high-waisted um, Wide leg view of the Dawn jean and then once I've got those I think I will move on to the uh, Indigo denim Rudy Jude inspired jean because I want to buy like a really nice denim and I don't want it to go to waste I want to use it well and so this is kind of this is the ultimate goal for that and probably will be like late next year that this pair of jeans comes about or late next season rather that this pair of jeans will come about and so i wanted to put all my fabrics here uh, here so that you can kind of see them all together i think that these are all going to work really nicely together they're not you know all complementary to each other but i think based on the pieces that i've chosen these fabrics will all look so good and i love the variety of texture and color and weight and knits versus wovens and all of that good stuff so i'm really looking forward to getting into these fabrics and just so you know these were also all like accumulated over time not bought in bulk so when you're planning your wardrobe i think starting sooner is a good idea so that you can kind of bring things in slowly and at your own pace now that was everything for this video thank you so much for tuning in i hope you enjoyed it i know it was a bit of a lengthier one so hopefully you got a coffee or a tea or a glass of wine or something to to sip on while you watched it i would love to know what your sewing plans are for fall and winter or if you're knitting anything nice and cozy um, over the over this next season and if you're not already following me on my other channels on instagram or TikTok, i would really love to see you there thank you so much and i will see you next week Bye-bye.